And now to some new information on a deadly fire in the East Village that left two teenagers clinging to a pole trying to escape the flames. Fire investigators now believe e-bike batteries caused the fire. This is pretty terrifying. Recently on Reddit, there's been a, a flurry of activity around the topic of e-bike fires and explosions. Here's uh, one such example of this posted just two days ago. It reads, recently posted in my building. I'm assuming this is like an apartment building. Is the fire risk really that bad? So they're now prohibiting the transportation and charging of e-bikes to your unit, and they may not be charged inside the building due to the risk of fire. And here's another example in the news. There's plenty of these you can find online, but it says, dramatic moment, a house goes up in flames as an e-bike explodes. Owners are urged to be alert when charging electric bikes and scooters after a house went up in flames when a battery exploded. By the time the MFS was able to get the blaze under control, the inside of the home had already sustained significant damage. It's said that there have been a growing number of e-batteries exploding and causing fires. And then we have this article from Vice that has this beautiful cover photo of a bike covered in flames. The title here is New York's e-bikes keep catching fire and it's getting worse. A few weeks ago, I was in my local bike shop in Brooklyn waiting on some repairs. The bike shop sells mostly regular bikes, but some e-bikes too from name brands. I was chatting with the owner about e-bike fires, which have been making the local news recently. As we spoke, a young man walked in and asked the owner if they do e-bike battery repairs for a specific brand. The owner said they don't carry that brand, so they can't do the repairs either. The man said, okay, I guess I'll buy the battery I saw on Alibaba then, and walked out. And that's how you get fires, the owner said. So here we finally have our first hint as to what's causing these devastating fires. And if we come back to Reddit and read some of the comments, we can gain from their infinite wisdom. So it says, no, the risk of a fire for a commercially produced battery is negligible. A DIY Alibaba hack job, however, is a much more risky affair. And then we have this guy here reminding us that a couple of years ago, Samsung actually had a whole bit of their phones exploding from faulty batteries. So it can happen with even more uh, name brand products. But before proceeding any further, I think it's important to understand why lithium batteries uh, explode and catch fire. So the basics, this is what the inside of most uh, larger e-bike batteries look like. It's comprised of multiple cells that are welded together. And then there's usually a BMS, which controls the whole thing. And it's supposed to keep it within healthy, safe limits. So why do lithium batteries catch fire? Most fires that occur from lithium batteries are due to thermal runaway. A thermal runaway happens when conditions are met that cause the reaction to occur and cannot easily be stopped. These reactions are exothermic, meaning that they give off heat and that heat can be enough to cause a fire. If or when the case fails, the flammable and toxic gases within the cell are released. Once a thermal runaway starts, the process cannot be stopped even by unplugging the battery. And as somebody that owns an e-bike, this stuff really is truly terrifying. And we're about to go over practical steps you can take to minimize this risk and be safer. So as we discussed, the number one risk factor, according to my research, is buying sketchy no-name batteries, mostly from China. Also, most of these fires happen when charging the battery. So I'm going to say only charge your e-bike battery when you're around. So don't charge it and go out for the day or even do it overnight. Personally, I only charge it for you know a couple hours at a time when I'm home. Now at this point, I'm going to give you guys a product recommendation if you want to go the extra mile in safety. And these are known as fireproof battery bags. So essentially you can put your e-bike battery in this bag for storage or while charging for the extra level of safety. And this one right here is the biggest I found and it should fit most e-bike batteries. So I'll leave it linked down below. Or you could be like this guy and charge your battery inside of a furnace. This commenter points out that it will contain the fire and heat some water for your tea at the same time. 
So you can get a fireproof bag. I'm also going to say by quality. So that would mean batteries from Samsung, Panasonic, LG, all the reputable names. You can also look for the UL certification. Batteries with a UL listing have been tested to meet nationally recognized safety standards. And then other risk factors include using the wrong charger, that's a big no-no, overcharging, over-discharging, physical damage to the battery cells, as well as exposing it to extreme heat. And these do overlap because all of these factors damage the battery. So you can see how it's all related. But if you have a quality name brand battery, it should be able to handle this with a quality BMS. Now at this point, you might be looking at your battery to see if it is quality or not. I know I definitely did. So this is the battery I currently have. It is from Alibaba and it uses 21700 lithium battery cells. And the company is Unit Pack Power, and they are pretty popular. You might know them from their Amazon listings, Unit Pack Power. They sell tons of different e bike batteries. And aside from using this size battery cell, the BMS does cover these functions overcurrent, over discharge, overcharge, short circuit protection, and balancing. Now, unfortunately, Unit Pack Power isn't uh, a super reputable, huge company. It's from China. I haven't heard anything bad directly, but this BMS could be low quality, and the battery cells, I don't know who produces them. Now, in contrast to that, this is Chai Battery Systems, and I'm not affiliated with them. This is not an ad, but I've heard lots of good things about this company and a few others. We do um, crush tests with our batteries uh, to make sure that, uh, first of all, that we're not breaking welds or something like that, but to make sure that there isn't something that we missed that could potentially short or damage a battery. You know, we take our customer feedback really seriously. They also use 21700 cells, but they give you the name of the manufacturer, Molicel, and from my research, this is a reputable producer. And finally, the last and probably biggest thing you can do to have a safer battery is to switch from lithium ion to lithium iron phosphate. Lithium ion batteries are rechargeable batteries that use lithium as one of their active components. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are a type of lithium ion batteries known for their long life and inherent safety. This is a great post detailing the exact differences between the two types of batteries. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to learn more. But in terms of safety, lithium iron phosphate has excellent thermal and chemical stability. This battery stays cool in higher temperatures. It's also incombustible when it is mishandled during rapid charges or discharges or when there's a short circuit issue. And this is key. Lithium iron phosphate does not normally experience that thermal runaway. And he leaves a pros and cons list of each battery type right here. The main advantage of lithium ion batteries is the higher energy density, and that's why most mobile devices use this kind of battery from reputable sources. So leave a comment, are you worried about this happening? Hopefully this video helped you in some way to gather knowledge. I appreciate a like before you go, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you next time.